Your contribution has expired. Senator Sims. Thank you, Mr President. The vet fee help system is broken and it's <laughs> rotten to its core. What was originally designed as a model to expand access to training for Australians has now become an untamable beast that is ripping off students, it's ripping off taxpayers and it is corroding the integrity of our entire vet sector. Now, since the full transition to this demand scheme entitlement, a demand driven entitlement, vet fee help has exploded in cost rocketing from $300 million in 2012 to $650 million in 2013, and then almost tripling to two uh, in 2014 to nearly $2 billion of taxpayers' money. $2 billion of taxpayers' money, $2 billion of student money. And current estimates put it at three to four billion dollars for the year 2015. What a huge amount of money! Now, what do students and taxpayers get for this huge investment? What do they get? Well, they get a never-ending conga line of rip-offs and scandals and rorts. And if you're any, in any doubt about that, uh, Mr. President, just pick up the, the newspapers, watch the news. This is a scandal. In fact, the Prime Minister himself has described it as a scandal. It seems everybody in this country recognises what a scandal this is and recognises that we need to take action. And uh, let me just uh, uh, recount a few of um, the incidences that have been reported to the Chamber. Only last week we found out that uh, Third-party brokers were posting fake job ads when applicants inquired and applied for the job. They were told they would need a further qualification to be able to take up the role, a qualification which would handily be provided by the RTO employing the broker. Earlier this year, reports surfaced about brokers signing up those, uh, some people with intellectual disabilities, signing them up to five-figure loans to study courses they didn't understand that they were enrolled in signing up when they didn't uh, understand the terms of the agreement or the complexity of the help system and income contingent loans or the expectations that students would have of their education providers. And indeed, it's become clear that that's the business model of some of these unscrupulous operators, preying on people who don't understand the terms of the agreements, getting them to sign along the dotted line when they don't understand what they're signing or what the implications are. What disgusting and unethical behaviour, and this is the kind of behaviour that has been fostered by the lack of regulation, hands-off approach that the government has taken, but of course it was the Labor Party that set this system in motion. I am absolutely disgusted by this sort of behaviour and am furious that this was ever allowed to occur within the VET model. Indeed, the Greens have been speaking out against this for some time. In my home state of uh, South Australia, the uh, company I educate has been going around to schools, particularly some of those in lower income areas, offering inducements to direct students to uh, study their courses. A letter that uh, my office obtained shows that I educate offering students money for signing up to their courses. And part of the letter reads that there is no limit to the number of students you may enrol. Therefore, we would pay your school a $5,000 grant uh, should you successfully enrol 10 students, provided they pass the census date. Provided they pass the census date, there's no limit to the number of people will enrol. Just sign up. They also offered potential students free laptops. This vulture-like behaviour is just another example of this unethical business model being practised by these huge providers, luring students away from school and saddling them with huge debts, saddling them with huge debts even before they turn the age of 18. How scandalous that is. There are further stories of students being drawn in by inducements like laptops and iPads, even after the government's latest round of reforms. I say reforms, uh, they fell pretty flat in terms of addressing the needs of the sector. But while before the reforms, students were told they were free, now they were told that uh, the laptops and iPads are simply loans that the RTO would never attempt to recover. So kind of an unlimited loan. Here's the laptop. Don't worry about paying it back. 
Hundreds of students have signed up to a class action against Avoca College for providing substandard courses and using unethical and non-transparent market practices. Students would be routinely told degrees would cost half of what they would actually cost. And Avoca has the gall, has the hide in their submission to the committee inquiry into this bill to say that students are intentionally misusing the system and that one way to fix it is to lower the repayment threshold. So blaming the victim, of course, they don't take any responsibility for their unethical behaviour. Can you imagine, Mr President, uh, uh, acting uh, Deputy President rather, uh, adding a $40,000 student loan repayment to someone living on $30,000 a year, right on the margins of being able to make ends meet? What a nonsense that is. That really is victim blaming at its absolute worst. And despite the scandals, uh, despite the rorts, what sort of outcomes are we getting? What kind of uh, outcomes are we getting if we put those things aside? Well, we're seeing plummeting graduation rates, plummeting levels of skills training and exploding student debt, much of which will fall on the taxpayer. It's the taxpayer that's going to be carrying, uh, carrying that burden. Last month, the National Centre for Vocational Education and Research established that in the early days of the scheme, only 21 per cent of students eligible for a VET fee help loan completed their courses. Just 21 per cent. 21 per cent. How embarrassing that is. For those doing full-time online courses in management or commerce, the graduation rate is just 8 per cent. 8 per cent, Acting Deputy President. What an appalling indictment on our training system that is. What an embarrassment that is. But unfortunately, graduation uh, rates, these incredibly low graduation rates, are just the beginning of this sordid tale. Such is the lack of confidence in the current vet sector that often the degrees are worth less than the paper they're written on. Businesses know students are not being equipped with the necessary skills to graduate. And students are then coming out, left with floundering, floundering around with huge debts, worthless degrees and job prospects that are being damaged rather than enhanced. The collateral from this vet fee help experiment is enormous. The damage is enormous. The human cost is enormous. There's expected to be over a billion dollars in dodgy loans that will be unrepayable and which will now be footed by the Australian taxpayer. And that is only for students who are expected to never earn enough to meet the income threshold. Those who are unlucky enough to earn over 54 k per annum must now repay tens of thousands of dollars for their worth worthless qualifications, qualifications that haven't even contributed to a student's skills or employability. Vet fee help has failed. The two national agreements, which were part and parcel of the vet fee help rollout, espoused the following aims. They said that they would improve training accessibility, affordability and depth of skills. They said they would encourage responsiveness in training arrangements. They said that they would assure the quality of training delivery and outcomes with emphasis on measures that give industry more confidence in the standard of training delivery and assessment. They said they would provide greater transparency through information to ensure consumers can make informed choices and governments can exercise accountability. Well, how did they do? How did they meet these aims? Is training more affordable? No, not for the taxpayer and certainly not for students with the blowout in unregulated course fees. Is training more responsive? Responsive to the demands of the uh, for-profit rent seekers, perhaps. <laughs> responsive to the needs of this for-profit industry but certainly um, not responsive to the uh, needs of the students and certainly not providing high quality education, certainly not providing that. This sector has never been held in greater disrepute. Even many in the private vet industry are now calling for further regulation and greater transparency so that consumers can make more informed choices. So you've even got people in this sector. You've even got dodgy providers coming out and saying they want more accountability because even they recognise it's not working. How laughable, Mr President. The measures before the Senate today are like putting a new coat of paint 
on a car with a cracked engine. The car's broken, and it doesn't matter how many racing stripes you paint on it, it won't do what it was designed to do. In fact, this car really is a bomb. The government needs to tear the system down and go back to the drawing board and start again. And, you know, Labor's amendments are an improvement, but they won't fix a broken system. This is a result of a flawed incentive structure, where you have a demand-driven entitlement combined with a lack of information and then a profit incentive being provided. You can try and regulate it. You can try and provide more education. But the for-profit shonks will always fill the gaps. If there's an incentive there, you're always creating um, an incentive for people to do the wrong thing. Neither Labor nor the Coalition have their hands clean here. We need to stop playing politics with our students' future and we need to rethink how we supply skills training in this country so that we can put a stop to this broken system and start again. The Greens are committed to seeing the end of the vet sector being used as a political football. We want to actually fix this broken system. And while the Labor and Liberal parties have been scoring points off each other over who's more to blame, you know, we know Labor, Labor set it up while the Liberals have sat on their hands. We know all of this. But in the, at the end of the day, it's students who are being caught in the crossfire. It's students who are being duped out of getting the quality education that they thought that they signed up for. They're not getting what they're paid for. They're not getting what they signed up for. Many have been lured into courses that they never wanted or never needed, and even more are now being straddled with debt and worthless degrees. Well, while we recognise that today's bill won't come close to solving all of the problems, we do believe that it will address some of these unethical practices. And we do believe that it's important that we give students some level of clarity heading into the new year. The system does need to be redesigned from the ground up, and hopefully this bill will provide the breathing space to allow this to happen. But you know, the position of the Greens has always been that we don't want to see just mere window dressing. We actually want to see substantial changes to this broken sector, and that's why we've been calling for that's why we've been calling for an end to public money going to for-profit providers. It's not accountable. The Australian taxpayer has no oversight over how the money is being spent and we can't control the education outcomes. And that's a broken model. Once you start giving public money to for-profit providers to start rolling out education, you're really playing with fire. That's the position that the Greens have been taking in this debate, and we're the only voice pushing that, that, uh, that argument in this debate, as both the Labor and Liberal parties continue to clamour towards privatisation of our education system. But we do welcome what the government have uh, put forward in terms of this legislative response. It is a move in the right direction in terms of reining in a broken sector, but we need to go much further than this. We do need to, uh, to end um, public money going to for-profit providers, and only if we do that will we achieve what Senator Carr has uh, talked about, turning off the tap. We need to turn off the tap for the for-profit providers so that we can ensure that we have a quality uh, education system in this country. Thank you.